Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillah rahman rahim Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. I want to welcome all of you who are tuning in for the first episode, the first session of our Surat al-Hujurat series with three, mashallah, renowned teachers who are joining us, very respected teachers that are going to be teaching us today. This is the first time we've ever held a Surat al-Hujurat series at Celebrate Mercy, and I'm so excited about it. I'm sure you all are as well. And take a moment, since this is the opening session, and maybe think about any of your friends, family members, uh, classmates, neighbors, who would be interested in joining this program, inshallah. In every session, we're going to hear a brief recitation of the surah for about eight minutes or so, and then we are going to hear from our teachers who are going to go verse by verse, ayah by ayah, um, in, into this uh, chapter of the Qur'an. Um, Surah Al-Hujurat is 18 verses, and we will be uh, looking at one or two or three verses in each of these seven sessions, inshallah. And this session, this opening session, actually has all three of our teachers joining us this evening, inshallah. There, and there is a lot to learn from this surah. Um, I'm very excited about it. And inshallah, I hope that you all can encourage friends to join us, inshallah. Um, the link to, to, to uh, join this webinar is uh, celebratemercy.org slash sh. That's celebratemercy.org slash sh for Surat, Surat al-Hujurat, inshallah. And that is that link will take them directly to Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel where we are streaming this live uh, right now. So don't don't forget that link or just tell them to go to Celebrate Mercy on YouTube and catch this. Uh, this is your opportunity to invite friends and family to tune in because if they enjoy and benefit from this opening session, then inshallah they will stay and uh, join all of them on Wednesday evenings and Saturday evenings, inshallah. And don't forget the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever guide someone to goodness, to a good deed, will have a reward like the one who did it. So inviting your friends and family to tune in and join us, inshallah, will only multiply your own blessings and your own reward, inshallah. You can also find the Live Now flyer posted on our Instagram story, on our social media, so you can share it that way. You can screenshot this flyer and send it to your WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, uh, text it to friends and family, inshallah, because this has the link on the flyer where they can join us live and watch the webinar right now, inshallah. And while you're watching on YouTube, another way you can help share this video with others is if we get a lot of people pressing the like button, clicking on that like button and commenting during the webinar, inshallah, then that also helps share the video because YouTube, when they see a bunch of people liking these live streams, these videos, and and you know commenting, then they will start recommending this video, this video series to other people, people who may be just randomly browsing, trying to find some Islamic content, and they may be recommended this live stream, inshallah, simply because a lot of people clicked on the like button. So try to do that, inshallah, especially if you are actually enjoying the program, click the like button. And don't forget, you can subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the video gems that we post on our um, on our YouTube, or when we go live, especially if you click the bell, you can be notified uh, that we've gone live, inshallah. And this is just one series out of multiple webinars we're, do we're hosting in Rabi al-Awwal. We are, we are actually hosting 75 webinars in 30 days. Um, so we have a kids program, we have a Siran Shama'il program, we have Friday gems, we have morning salawat programs. Uh, mashallah. We also have a global salawat campaign. Maybe you all have already signed up for that, but we are asking Muslims around the world to pledge how many salawat or durud they can recite uh, and send Allah's peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The blessings in doing so are, you know, you can't even count, uh, inshallah. But if you can make a pledge, how many salawat can you recite? In this month, inshallah, uh, you will add to the global numbers. And right now we have 
Uh, this is actually a little bit outdated. This is as of this morning, but we actually have about 2.5 million salawats that have been pledged for the month of Rabi al Awal. And when you go on the website, you can see which countries we have the most pledges from, which countries are rising in the rankings. Every time you refresh the page, the rankings will change, the numbers will change. So far, we have over 350 pledges right now from 31 countries. So make your pledge. If you if you can recite 100 salawat a day, that's a pledge of 3,000. And when you finish your pledge, you complete your pledge, you fulfill it, you can go back and pledge more, inshallah. So let's see if we can get the numbers higher during this webinar. Before we get started with our recitation of Surah Al-Hujurat, I do want to thank our webinar sponsors. We have two families who sponsored. Uh, the family of Marhum Dr. Abdul Quddus. Ya Allah, protect us all. This is their dua request, and inshallah, we should all say ameen. Ya Allah, protect us all from all the difficulties and challenges of the deen, dunya, and akhirah. Ya Allah, most merciful, bless those who return to you with Jannatul Firdaus. May we all live as our beloved Sallallahu did in service of and for the pleasure of Allah. Everyone say ameen to this beautiful, beautiful dua. We also have the Martin family. And their du'a request was, Oh Allah, open the hearts of all our family members for your message and your messenger, Sallallahu and guide them to the straight path. Oh Allah, bless the Celebrate Mercy team for spreading this message of love, light, and mercy and grant them success in this life and the next. So we're really, really appreciative of these two families who helped sponsor this webinar. Again, we have 75 webinars this month. We are looking for more sponsors, whether they're family sponsors or maybe it's a Muslim company who wants to share a message with a Muslim audience, inshallah. So email us if you're interested. It is a huge help to Celebrate Mercy if you can be a sponsor and help us cover some of these costs, inshallah. So we are going to start with a recitation of the Quran by our dear brother, Qari Sinan Hafiz, uh, mashallah, who we've had so many times on this program. And I'm going to introduce him and then he will begin with this recitation of the 18 verses of Surah Al-Hujurat, inshallah. Right after he's done, we will go into introductory remarks from our three teachers, inshallah. Qari Sinan Hafiz was born and raised in the UAE and has loved the Quran since he was four years old. He has a master's in business administration and enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading the recitation and praying for the hearts to soften through the words of Allah. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring our dear brother to the stage. Okay, looks like we had a technical issue there. I just got kicked out of the kicked out of the webinar, but I'm back. Uh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah. Did did everyone hear my introduction? I, I don't know. Did it did it, did you hear me introduce you? Uh it's actually it crashed and uh I, I tried to connect again. I don't know. Uh, okay, let me introduce you one more time. <laughs> Our dear brother Sinan Hafiz was born and raised in the UAE. He's loved the Quran since he was four years old. He has a master's in business administration, enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading its recitation and praying for the hearts. To soften through the words of Allah. So we're very honored to have you. Uh, and inshallah, you can go ahead and begin the recitation now. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday allahi wa rasoolih Wattaqu allaha inna allaha sami'un alim Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu la tawfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون 
إن الذين يغضون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم إن الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين واعلموا أن فيكم رسول الله لو يطيعكم في كثير من الأمر لعنتم ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكره إليكم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان أولئك هم الراشدون فضلا من الله ونعمة والله عليم حكيم وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا فأصلحوا بينهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى فقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفيء فقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفيء إلى أمر الله فإن فاءت فأصلحوا بينهما بالعدل وأقسطوا إن الله يحب المقسطين إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الايمان ومن لم يتب فاولئك هم الظالمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن ان بعض الظن اثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم يا أيها 
الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله لا يلدكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون قل أتعلمون الله بدينكم والله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض والله بكل شيء عليم يمنون عليك أن أسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي إسلامكم بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم للإيمان إن كنتم صادقين إن الله يعلم غيب السماوات والأرض والله بصير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله جزاكم الله خير سيدي سنان Qari Sinan Hafiz for that uh, amazing, amazing recitation. MashaAllah, we, we were getting so many comments as you were reciting, subhanAllah, from our audience. Uh, you can see here some of the comments. May Allah bless you with the most beautiful of gardens, beautifully recited, and just so many comments. I'm not going to read them all, but I'll just show some of them very quickly. Uh, many of the comments coming in, really, really um, benefiting from that beautiful recitation. MashaAllah, uh, the sister saying that it brought tear, tears to her eyes. MashaAllah, and we love your comments. Keep them coming. We love to hear from the audience as you are uh, watching this program. We also have almost 300 devices uh, many uh, or families who are tuning in right now. So we probably have at least 500 individuals joining for this webinar. Uh, don't forget, you can still share this with your friends. We're about to go into our teacher's portion. So invite your friends to tune in, inshallah. Send them our YouTube channel. Send them the link, celebratemercy.org slash sh for Surah Hujurat. And uh, inshallah, they can tune in live and catch this first opening session, this opening session, inshallah. And if they benefit from it and enjoy it, they will hopefully join the other six sessions coming up in Rabi al-Awwal. This is a seven-part series, and this is the opening. So inshallah, those who join the opening will stay on for the rest of the series, inshallah. And you'll get more blessings and barakah for bringing more people to such beneficial knowledge, inshallah. So we're going to start with the introduction to Surat Al-Hujrat. We're going to hear um, just about five minutes from each teacher speaking about this surah, and then we'll go into reflections on uh, the first verse. So first, we're going to start with introductions to the surah, why this surah is so important, the benefits, the blessings of this particular surah of the Qur'an, the surah al-Hujurat, inshallah. I'm going to start with Sheikh Mendez. Uh, let me introduce him, and then we will get started. 
Sheikh Mohammed Adeyinka Mendez is co-founder of the Nibras Institute and the African American Healing, Ancestry, and Development Collective, the Ahad Collective. Mashallah, he studied Arabic, Islamic sciences, meditation, and peace building with Muslim scholars in North America, Syria, Mauritania, Nigeria, Senegal, the Gambia, and Haiti. He works as an author, translator, teacher of Arabic and Islamic studies, and a youth and adult rites of passage leadership consultant who continues to read with scholars and students. And his latest work, The Spirits of Black Folk, Sages Through the Ages, a translation of Imam Suyuti's renowned text, Raf Arshatn al Hubshan, The Excellence of Black People, was published in 2021 by Celebrate Mercy. And he currently lives with his spouse, Ruqayat, Ustad Ruqayat Yaqub, an award winning children's author and Montessori educator, and their lovely children. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring uh, Sheikh Mendes to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my dear brother, Tariq, how are you doing? I'm well, I'm well. I'm very excited, uh, you know, for this series. It's some, you know, series we wanted to do for at least two or three years now, but finally it's, uh, it's, uh, it's here, alhamdulillah. So we have three amazing teachers, including yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very excited. So I'll leave the stage to you for the, the introduction, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi al-tahirin wa sahabihi al-tayyibin wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmi al-deen. Dear brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, this uh, surah, surah al-hujurat, uh, the chapter of the, the walled rooms, often translated also as the, the chapter of the uh, private chambers, uh, is the 49th surah of the Qur'an. And uh, it is a surah that, uh, as uh, my dear brother uh, Tariq al-Masidi said, it's a, surah, it's a surah, it's a chapter of the Qur'an uh, that is full of lessons and guidance and guidelines on our conduct, uh, what is called adab. And uh, the word adab is from a a beautiful word in Arabic, ma'adaba, which means a banquet. And so the connection between conduct and manners and a banquet is that when you're invited to a feast, when you're invited to a banquet, uh, you are expected to have the highest and the most refined of manners. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he referred to the Qur'an as Ma'dabatullah fil ard as the banquet of God on earth. And as we come to this surah, uh, this is uh, one of the feasts of meanings, the feast of, of guidance uh, that is contained in this, this banquet of Allah's speech, of God's word. Now, uh, Surah Al-Hudurat has 18 ayat, and there's a beautiful structure to these ayat. And it's really important, very important that we that we look at the structure, the what's called the macro structure of the surah. The first five ayat teach us, God is teaching us how to have adab, beautiful conduct, uh, comportment with God and his messenger, with Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why we, should ne- we shouldn't limit Surah Al-Hujurat, the chapter of the wall rooms, to just being a, a surah that discusses social conduct. It does teach us how to have social conduct, but it's also a surah that teaches us spiritual conduct, how we should conduct ourselves with God and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the next section of Surah Al-Hujurat deals with our conduct, our adab, with the believers, with our co-religionist, with the faithful. And then the next section deals with our conduct with humanity, like how we should engage and interact in harmony, in peace with our fellow human beings. And then... Lastly, 
the last section of Surah Al-Hujurat again returns beautifully. And you see this in many surahs of the Quran, back to our adab, our conduct, our comportment with Allah and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, you know, one of the greatest, most brilliant uh, Muslim thinkers and educators of our time, Dr. Sayyid Muhammad Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Muhammad Naqib al Atas from Malaysia, may Allah preserve him, uh, he is uh, well known for saying that the crisis of our age, the most uh, problematic aspect of the, our current time, is the crisis of adab. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, Adabani Rabbi fa'ahsana ta'dibi. My nurturing master, my Lord gave me, taught me, instilled in me the most beautiful conduct. And how beautiful is my conduct. And adab, the crisis of adab is ultimately uh, Dr. Sayyid Naqib al Atas says is a crisis of knowledge. Because the more a person increases in knowledge, the more a person increases in spirituality, the more a person increases in their relationship. And this is what Surah Al Hujurat is teaching us how to cultivate a beautiful, meaningful relationship with Allah, with Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, with our believers and with our fellow human beings. It's not just enough to obey Allah. It's not just enough to obey the messenger, but Allah is also inviting us to be in relationship with himself and with his beloved وسلم. So I look forward to going on this journey of swimming and reflecting and contemplating and discussing with our shuyukh Mashallah, Imam Ahmadib and Sheikh Yasir Fahmi, may Allah preserve them, the meanings of the surah of the walled rooms, the surah of the private chambers. May Allah give each and every one of us who are watching and listening uh, to this beautiful course in this blessed month of Rabi'l Awwal, the month of the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah give us the best adab, the most beautiful conduct, the most excellent conduct. May Allah Ta'ala give us the most refined adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us the most refined conduct and manners and comportment with our fellow Muslims, with our fellow believers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may God exalted and transcendent as he give us the most exalted and refined character and comportment with our fellow human beings. And, be, and I will extend as I close not just our fellow human beings, but with our fellow creatures. One of my teachers, he taught us uh, Shafi Fiqh, mashallah, Ustad Amr Khalifa, may Allah preserve him. He once taught us that a Muslim should treat the rocks and the dirt with the same adab, with, with, the, most, with the same excellent character that he would treat or she would treat animals. I'm sorry, plants and that they should treat plants and trees and shrubs with the same respect and, and, and adab that they would treat animals. And they should treat animals with the same respect, with the same adab that they should treat human beings. And they should treat those who are not Muslim, people of other faiths or of no faith, people of other traditions with the same adab that they would expect it to treat Muslims. And they should treat Muslims, their fellow Muslims, with the same adab, with the same comportment that they would expect to be treated. Treat others as you would expect to be treated yourself. Treat others as you want to be treated. May Allah Ta'ala bless us with all of this. Wa aqulu kulli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sali muslimi wa astaghfirullah. Inna Allah ghafurur rahim. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wa'iyakum, jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh uh, Mendez, for that beautiful introduction, mashallah. We're also going to hear brief introductions from our other teachers as well, uh, beginning with uh, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi next. Let me introduce Sheikh Yasser to our audience, inshallah, and then we'll get into his uh, introductory remarks. 
Sheikh Yasser Fahmi graduated from Rutgers Business School, and after working for a number of years in finance, he moved to Egypt, where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. And in his time at Al-Azhar, he attained numerous ijazas, that's independent certifications. And he studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan, Rahimahullah. And in 2013, Sheikh Yasser became the first American Azhari to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque. And currently he is the founder of Prophetic Living. And you can learn more about Prophetic Living on their social media and his programs there, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Yasser. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. How are you, Habib? Good. I'm very excited about uh, your lessons here with the other teachers as well. And I'll, I'll go ahead and leave the stage to you, inshallah. Barakallah feekum, barakallah feekum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man huwa la wa la hawla wa la quwwati illa billah. Wa la hawla wa la quwwati illa billah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fil awalina wa fil akhirina wa fil mala'il ala ila yawm al-deen. Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing and an honor to be with all of you our dear brothers and sisters, and celebrate mercy in all of our mashayikh and teachers and beloveds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unify our hearts always upon the love of Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may we all be together ala surah al in the company of al-Habib al-Mustafa al-Mushtab al-Mukhtar Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad, mashallah, gave us so much important context. I'll um, perhaps embellish on what he has already shared, a few thoughts that perhaps may help in contextualizing this chapter, this sacred chapter of the Qur'an. This surah was revealed in the latter part of the Medinan uh, period of the life of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is said to be have been revealed roughly around the ninth year after Hijrah. So we're talking about one of the very latter revelations, almost perhaps a year before the passing of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this year of the ninth year of Hijrah is also known as Aam al-Wufud, the year of delegations. So this is the year when the tribes, the surrounding tribes were coming to al Madina, Al-Munawwara, the city of lights, and they were pledging their allegiance to Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are pledging their allegiance to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this is a very big step because the followers up until that point had been followers who were curated under the direct guidance of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those that happened through the various ghazawat and futuhat. Now you have the Arab tribes, which were the governing kind of political authorities of that time, coming to give their deference to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an authority. And so Surah Al-Hujurat has a very distinct context that should we should be looking at to understand the significance of this chapter because Surah Al-Hujurat is establishing normativity. It's establishing a new social order for how society will function. It's coming in that final stage. And now with the, if you will, the finality of these Arab tribes that were staunchly stuck in their ways for all that time, now they're coming to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, literally coming to the Hujurat. And from the Asrar, from the secrets of this titling of Al-Hujurat, the closed quarters, the walled uh, uh, quarters, as Sheikh Muhammad noted, is an indication of now that truth and objectivity and normativity is found enclosed in the space of divine revelation, in the space of the world that Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam occupies. So you will come to him to learn standards, mores, morals, your code of conduct, your practice, your philosophical outlook, how you're going to think about society, how you think about uh, uh, knowledge, understanding, know-how, how you're going to conduct yourself as an individual, as a tribesman, as a member of a particular family, a member of a particular race, a member of a particular country, whatever the circumstances are, these are the standards that now will govern who you are. And so brothers and sisters, for us, Surah Al-Hujurat is an absolutely essential chapter for us to understand our own standards as Muslim living in the modern era that have perhaps 
come into Islam, whether one was born into Islam or whether someone embraced Islam, but there is a level of um, arbitrariness at times in the modality of our practice and our religiosity. There is a little bit of, you know, pick and choose or it's a, it can be hodgepodge at times. No, Surah Al-Hujurat is giving us a distinct standard. Sheikh Muhammad noted the adab, right? The adab that must now govern your the character traits, the comportment, the disposition. That you really like the word adab is also in reference to al adib. Al adib is the is the literary master. The one who knows how to place words in a manner that are perfect to produce the perfect meaning. And so that's at the essence of adab. It's that we, we, we develop refinement and excellence in our craft. You know, you think of, of a musician, you think of a cook, you think of a sportsman, someone, people who really refine their craft and they go through a meticulous process of understanding how to habituate and condition and develop sensibilities and so on and so forth and know the, the methods and the approaches and the tools and the skill sets required. Well, Surat al-Hujurat is giving us those adab, those essential adab to refine us beautifully. But we have to come to this space, and as we progress in the ayat, we have to enter into the space with humility and with profound sub- surrender and, and beautiful submission to the reality of la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our journey through the sacred chapter Surat al-Hujurat and may we, we be illuminated by its lights and guidance. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair to Sheikh Yasser uh, for the beautiful introductory remarks. Um, we are now going to go to our introductory remarks by uh, Imam Ahmad Deeb, mashallah, who uh, is joining us as uh, one of our teachers as well in this series. And after his remarks, we will go into reflections on the first verse, the first ayah of this surah, inshallah. Imam Ahmad Deeb has been serving communities from an early age under the training and mentorship of his father, Sheikh Abdullah Deeb. He had a degree in psychology, completed formal seminary training in Cape Town, South Africa. He holds a master's in Islamic studies and leadership at Bayan, and his academic interests and love of community work led him to community psychology, where he is a doctoral candidate and researcher in the field. He is the president of Itqan Institute, a premier Quran learning institute led by his father, and he is co-founder and a teacher at Pillars Seminary, which is a part-time institute that provides formal, balanced, and structured training in Islam to the general public. And he's also co-founder and imam of Shifa Community. And in his free time, he continues his study of the Islamic tradition with scholars, across the world and provides organizational consulting to communities across the country. So without any further delay, uh, let's go ahead and bring um, uh, Sheikh Ahmed to the stage. And we want to encourage everyone to uh, continue sharing this link with your friends and family. MashaAllah, we probably have now six to 700 viewers tuning in. MashaAllah. Uh, Imam Ahmed, this, the, the stage is now yours. It's great to have you with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah alhamdulillah. I want to thank the Celebrate Mercy team for having me uh, uh, where I, I don't think I'm be- I belong. It's like a Where's Waldo situation. <laughs> you have like the real shiuk, and I think I'm like the, the moderator to them. And I'm honored to be that. Uh, I, I'm really here benefiting with you all from our beloved teachers, Sheikh Yasir and Sheikh uh, Mendez. Hafizahumullah. Um, this particular chapter of the Qur'an is very, very close to my heart. Uh, as someone who grew up with a father who was an imam and whose father was an imam, and then I kind of found my way in this work, I remember when I started as an imam in the Toledo community, one of the you know founders and legends of the community, Dr. Mansoor, hafilahullah, um, I remember he came up to me once after Juma, and he said, you know, I want you to give a khutbah on Surah Hujurat. And then he said, you know, this is the constitution of the Muslim. And, you know, I, I, I love that. I never really thought about it that way, subhanAllah, but it, it's, it's true. 
this chapter of the Quran, you know, it is the constitution for the ummah and for society, as our beloved Sheikh Yasser uh, alluded to and mentioned. And it contains the essential conduct with God, with the prophet of God, and with each other. And those are the most important relationships in our life. Our relationship with God, our relationship with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and our relationship with each other. And those relationships are also supposed to be a means towards our uh, relationship with the Prophet and with Allah ultimately and our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what this chapter is really doing, you know, at a macro level, Sheikh Yasir so eloquently explained to us that uh, this is a normative, you know, representation now of how society is to function. And that's at the macro level. And then Sheikh Mendez beautifully mentioned that it's not just in terms of our interpersonal communication, but how is society to function in regards to our spiritual conduct, right? Those relations, our relationship with Allah, our relationship with the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, th- those are not separate from how we exist in the world. They're inseparable. In fact, this is, you know, another point Sheikh Yasser mentioned, which is essential, is that the level of, at times, whimsical, arbitrary decision-making that exists in society that usually comes from being divorced from the standards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put forth for us, for our own benefit in this dunya and ultimately for the akhirah. But at a micro level, it's also answering how do we do community, okay? How do we do community? Loneliness is the ultimate epidemic of the modern age, despite being more connected than ever before through social media. How are we to engage in meaningful and healthy relationships, the best of which are rooted in our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, this chapter in answering this question is constantly going uh, uh, in between preventative justice and restorative justice. The idea that here are some things that you have to keep in mind to prevent discord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his mercy, is pivoting us to, okay, well, when this goes wrong, here's how you restore that wrong. And these are the two prongs that keep us balanced in our pursuit of justice, because the foundation of even both of those, as mentioned in this chapter in multiple times, is love, love for one another, and Rahmah, which is the ultimate theme of our religion. And so this is an incredibly important chapter for the Muslim in every single age, but particularly in our age where those norms, the idea of norms have completely broken down. The idea of the family is now open to discussion. What is a family? Do we even need family? Is it all subjective? The idea, all of these norms have been broken down. And so you know, this chapter comes and says, these, there are divine norms and universal laws that we must abide by for our own benefit in this dunya. And of course, for our salvation in the next life. Now, one of the things Sheikh Yasser said, and I'm glad he mentioned it, I was planning to mention it, but someone far more worthy mentioned it, is the context of this chapter. Some commentators say that it is at Fatih Mecca. Now, Sheikh Yasser mentioned why that context is important, and I wanted to just reaffirm, this is also when the community is getting bigger, right? Thousands more are accepting Islam, and so naturally, a lot of people, as Sheikh Yasser mentioned, are coming in without being familiar with those universal, with those laws that the other companions were trained in for years and years and years. And that's why you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first few verses. You know, a mistake has occurred. If they did this, that would be better. But Allah is the most merciful. Allah is the most forgiving. And so keeping in mind that as the community grew, this is a, this is a phase in the seerah that at times isn't given much attention. That what happens after Fatah Mecca? How is the community do, to deal with very, very new challenges due to the growth of the community? 
And this is very relevant for our time, for our community in North America. And of course, for wherever you are, this is relevant. Some of the themes that you'll explore in this chapter are themes such as authority, engaging the concept of authority, themes like emotional intelligence, uh, all forms of social conduct, sacrifice, pain, self-awareness, entitlement, all of these things, subhanAllah, are mentioned in just a few verses in this beautiful chapter, which really is one of the great summaries as to how Islam is lived with one another, in context to one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow these meanings to not just enter our hearts, but to become evident in the way that we treat one another and in our actions and in our conduct with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you to uh, Sheikh Ahmad Deeb for, uh, for the beautiful introductory remarks. Masha'Allah. Um, that was uh, an amazing introduction by all of our teachers. Now we are actually going to go into uh, reflections on the first verse of Surah Al-Hujurat, inshallah. If we can pull up the first verse, uh, inshallah, um, of the 18 verses. Um, and I also wanted to mention this, since this surah is 18 verses long, uh, inshallah, we want to just encourage our audience um, if you have the capacity, if you are able to, inshallah, to try to memorize this surah during Rabi al Awal. We have about 25, 26 days left in this blessed month. You have 18 verses. So those who have the capacity, try to see if you can memorize it so that maybe by the final session of this class, you will have it memorized and it will be forever imprinted in your heart, inshallah, a surah that you can constantly uh, inshallah, um, recite over and over and over again, inshallah. So let's now go ahead and bring um, uh, Sheikh Mendes to the stage. Uh, he will be the first to speak about this first verse, and then we will bring um, our other two teachers to the stage as well right afterwards, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Mendes. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah, mashallah. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, immensely. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Deeb and Sheikh Yasser, I really benefited tremendously. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure along with everyone listening, uh, we are so thankful that you both uh, commented, uh, gave an incredible overview of uh, this, uh, this surah. And every surah of the Quran is profound and beautiful. Uh, but you know this surah has so much relevance, and we'll, we'll, we'll inshallah go right into the first ayah. But I'll be laying in the shaitan rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, as Hafid Sinan, may Allah preserve him in his beautiful voice, so beautifully recited earlier. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la tuqaddimu bain yadi Allah wa rasulih sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Oh, you who have embodied faith. Uh, I'm not going by the translation uh, that's uh, before you. Uh, inshallah, will contribute uh, my understanding of the meanings. Oh, you who have embodied faith. You who have believed. Do not advance. Do not go before God. Literally, do not walk ahead of God and his messenger. What taqullah? And be reverent of God. Indeed, verily, uh, certainly God hears all things and knows all things. Uh, this ayah, dear brothers and sisters, is an invitation uh, first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God exalted and transcendent, is he is calling out, is summoning, is bringing, putting on notice those who have iman, those who have faith. And by extension, uh, those who have faith are those who have love of Allah. And so Allah is calling the lovers and inviting those who have not yet tasted the sweetness of loving Allah of loving Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inviting those Muslims to the love of Allah. Allah says, 
those who have embodied faith, those who have believed are more intense, are most intense in their love for Allah. And so this is a specific address. And whenever we hear an ayah that begins with these words, oh, you who have embodied faith, there is some command, there is some prohibition that is coming, that is for our own elevation, that it is for that is for our own purification, that is for rectification of what is in us and what is between us as human beings, and what is needed for the nourishment of our souls and establishing right relations in our communities. And as I said earlier, dear brothers and sisters, the the surah, surah al-hujurat, is calling us to right relationship with Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first thing we're told is don't go ahead of Allah and his messenger. Realize, as Sheikh Yasser and Sheikh Ahmed Deeb, Imam Ahmed Deeb uh, both beautifully said, realize your place. And this is, again, based on knowledge of who God is and who Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. And once we realize our place in relation to Allah, who is our creator, who is our sustainer, who is our owner, who is our master, who is our teacher, who is the one who develops us from one stage of development until we reach perfection and completion in, in, our, in our, our full human potential, he is the one who will judge us on the day of judgment, on judgment day, when we realize our relationship to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is our teacher, who has brought us out of dark, manifold darknesses into light. He is the one who suffered and sacrificed everything for us. We realize that we should never put our opinions ahead of God's decree, God's guidance, and Prophet Muhammad's guidance. We should never put uh, our ideas, our culture, our habits, our routine, we should never, if we want success, and if we want God to elevate us and give us peace, we should never put our ideas and philosophies and ideologies uh, before God and his messenger. And this is such a beautiful image. It's literally an image of, 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 of walking behind God's guidance and God's commands and prohibitions and walking along, following the footsteps of the beloved Muhammad, our Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives us this beautiful command, Wattaqullah. And again, I, you know, often the words Ittaqullah are used in rebuke, but again, Allah speaking to his lovers, Ahbabu, Allah speaking to Ahbaba, his, his lovers, what taqwa What does taqwa mean? Taqwa, dear brothers and sisters, is one's awareness of the magnificence of God. It is one's acute attunement to the beauty of God such that it prevents you from disobeying the one whose magnificence and beauty you are witnessing, you, have, you are beholding, you are aware of. As for the one who magnifies, for the, the one who is aware of the of the distinct features of God's religion, it is from the taqwa, it is from the reverence of their hearts. Again, the heart, which is the place of knowledge, of cognition and love. And so I, I want us to, when we hear the words, ittaqullah, know that it's a, it's a call to love. Wallah yuhib al-mutaqeen. And Allah loves the people of taqwa, the people of reverence, the people of mindfulness of God the people of consciousness of God. And taqwa, its, its foundation is adl and afu, according to the Quran, because those who are just 
and those who are pardoning are akrab, the akrab al taqwa. They are the closest to taqwa, brothers and sisters. So this ayah ends with Allah teaching us two of his names. And the essence of every surah, as we conclude, is the, are the names of Allah that are in that surah, brothers and sisters. The essence of every surah. In fact, you could say that every surah is a tafsir, is a commentary of the names of Allah that are mentioned in that surah. This is the secret of the surah. In Allah Sami'ul Alim, Allah certainly, God is a Sami'. He is Sami'un, meaning God is the eternally hearing. There is never a time, never a moment, never an instant in God's eternal, everlasting existence when He does not hear all things. And Allah's hearing one thing does not distract him from hearing another thing. He hears the loud and the soft and the quiet the same way. There's no distinction. And Allah hears without needing and without using ears or any organs. His essence hears and he hears you. He hears your voice and he hears your thoughts. And we'll see in the next uh, ayah, Allah Ta'ala teaches us, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Messenger Wasallam. So this attribute uh, is appropriate here. And then lastly, Allah describes himself as alim. And you know this, this pattern, uh, fa'il, is again a pattern of permanence, a pattern of everlastingness. God knows all things, and he is always knowing. And there's never a time or, and never any existence for God outside of time because he's independent of time where he does not know all things. And God knows, as my Sheikh, Sheikh Murat, Sheikh Murat Haddamin, Rahmatullah um, in Mauritania, he said, God knows all things that were, God knows all things that are, and God knows all things that will be, and God knows all things that will never be had they been. His knowledge is absolute, his hearing is absolute, and he knows and he hears everything, including our own thoughts, May Allah Ta'ala uh, always give us success to walk behind the commandments and the prohibitions and the guidance of Allah and His Messenger. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa kullu kuali hadu wa astaghfiru li wa lakum. Wa risali muslimi wa astaghfiru. Inna Allah wa ghafuru al-rahim. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you so much, Sheikh Mendez, for the, uh, the beautiful reflections on the first verse of the Quran. We got so many beautiful comments coming in from the audience. Uh, I'm going to bring for the final portion here of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this talk or of this lesson, the first session, our other two teachers to the stage, Sheikh Mendez actually is teaching another class right now in, um, for an organization in Seattle. Um, so he can't join the group discussion, but I wanted to see if we could go to Sheikh Yasser and then um, uh, Sheikh Ahmed for additional reflections on this verse, inshallah. And, you know, what I really love about this particular class is that we have three teachers who have a good amount of experience actually leading communities. And this is a, 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 a te this is a surah that really involves teach uh, communities and uh, the constitution of a community. We have three teachers who have served as imams, have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of our communities uh, and, and really uh, been in the uh, trenches of community work. Um, so that's what's going to make these reflections even more beautiful, inshallah. So I'll start, I'll ask uh, Sheikh Yasser to first share some reflections and then uh, uh, Imam Ahmed, inshallah. Inshallah. Tayyib, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalam wa rasulillah. MashaAllah, I think Sheikh Muhammad covered so many beautiful and salient points. Um, I think just a few thoughts that come to mind in the context of what he had mentioned is this uh, nida, this call of Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, O you who believe. And this chapter, as we spoke about this chapter that is establishing normativity and, um, and setting the parameters of what our objective standards are, you see oft repeated, O oh, you who believe, this need that, this call to those who believe. 
And I think about this ayah or this nida, this opening, in the context of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Surah Al-Baqarah um, uh, about the Arabs. Don't say that you believe, but rather say that you have entered into surrender and submission. And when Iman enters into your heart, when belief. So this is also relevant in the context of us thinking about how Allah is telling us, if you, those of you who claim to be mu'minin, those of you who are saying, Ana mu'min, I am a believer, come forth and listen. I want you to be very aware of the, 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 the norms and the truths that I'm about to establish for you to consider. So this is also a nida that awakens the heart of the ghafil. It awakens the heart of the heedless one. Allah is saying, Ya yuha ladina amanu. So now I wake up and I say, wait, is that me? Am I a believer? I, I believe I'm a believer. Or I think I claim, no, nah, this is for me. لا تقدموا بين يدي الله. Now, subhanallah, this لا uh, تقدموا, this is uh, an imperative. It's a fi'l amr. And it's for, pro- for prohib- prohibitive purposes. So here we have um, a fi'l in a fa'il. We have a, a, a verb and we have the subject of the verb. The verb is don't put yourself forth or don't proceed ahead. Who is the subject? I am the subject. You are the subject. You and I must not go ahead. But the maf'ul, the object of this sentence, is omitted. Now in the language of the Quran, and we see from the usages, the linguistic usages, is hathful maf'ul, the omittance of the maf'ul bihi, which is the object of the sentence. Why then does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this context omit the maf'ul? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could say, لا تقدموا أنفسكم لا تقدموا أموالكم لا تقدموا he could, us, he, could, he could give us many objects to the sentence, but he gives us none. The reason why Allah omits the object is للعموم. It's because of the generality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do not bring forth or do not put forth anything. Anything. It's mahdhuf للعموم, للتعميم. To say that never put a thing, no matter what that thing is, in front of Allah and His Messenger wasallam. Don't you dare put wealth, don't put your honor, don't put your sense of dignity, don't put your tribal uh, affiliations, don't put your philosophies, don't put your feelings, don't put your pain, don't put your hurt, don't put your economic pressures, don't put political challenges, put nothing in front of Allah and His Messenger This is a very powerful and, 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 and soul-shaking beginning to say that if, if I'm a believer now, if I'm now as a Muslim living in the modern period hearing this كما أنزل, كأنه أنزل علي, as if it was revealed upon these humble ears and this um, impoverished soul then I'm going to say well hold on do I, do I put nothing in front of Allah and His Messenger you know perhaps I've buckled under so much pressure in this particular period of time that we live in, and there is much that goes in front of Allah and His Messenger. Actually, quite the contrary. Unfortunately, I have standardized a reality where I want the I want Allah and His Messenger to submit to my will, my interests, my pains, my fears. And I agonize over why Allah and His Messenger ask me to do certain things or don't ask me, or why establishing certain norms and certain practices. Why? Why this? As if the Quran is meant to accommodate my sensibilities. Well, the Arabs who came, because we're, I guess in the next coming ayat, we'll talk a little bit more about the specific stories, like the tribe of Banu Tamim that was coming, one of the delegated uh, tribes that was coming, a very uh, well known tribe, or the story between Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar. I, maybe I'll just give these teasers and then. Uh, we can speak about them in the coming ayat. But, you know, because each one of these have subtleties. You, know, you have these tribes. Imagine Banu Tamim coming and saying, you know, <laughs> here I am. You know, Ya Muhammad, come, okay, fine. 
you know, and and he said, you know, the 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 leader of Banu Tamim said, our praise is will will, will embellish you, will beautify you, but our them, if we castigate you, it will stain you. That's what he said. You know, فأخرج إلينا, come out to us, because he, he still felt like here he is humbled, coming all the way to the Prophet, but he still assumes, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna make an اعتبار for me, you're gonna rec- you're gonna acknowledge me. Allah saying, لا تقدموا بين no matter how much of a chieftain with you, you have a cultural imperative. These are people coming with a distinct cultural imperative for centuries on end. And he's coming with this gravitas, assuming that he's going to subject the Prophet ﷺ to himself. Uh, there's much more to be said, but I'm, I'm giving I'm being uh, flagged. <laughs> Barakallah feekum, Shaykh. It's so good to learn from you and see you. Uh, your, your reflection, uh, I think, remind, and, and Shaykh Muhammad, he, he also made this point about, like, uh, don't present anything. And at times, it could be that our lack of benefit from the very Quran that we read and the deeds that we do is because of so much projection mm-hmm. of what's inside onto what we expect it to tell us and so when you were when you were sharing your reflection i thought subhanallah the the first ayah of the quran that there are many people who read this and won't be guided because Allahu alam it could be their projection onto the quran as opposed to having taqwa and humility and uh just uh, uh listening with an open heart uh so I wanted to also ask uh, Sheikh a question. You know, I, I, you mentioned not presenting anything um, uh, forward. And, you know, th- this verse, according to some commentators, had like context about like uh, don't assign authority when the Prophet Sallallahu is there. So in terms of uh, just uh, uh, ways in which we can see this play out, can you give us some examples in a community context or in a family context where we could be aware of this? Yeah, barakallahu feekum. I mean, I think the the operative question to operationalize this mabda, this principle, is ماذا يرضي الله ورسوله? What will bring pleasure to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And that's not a subjective thing. This is an established objective reality that is passed down to us generation upon generation. This is a sacred tradition that is well preserved. So then there is normativity for how you consider the governance of a home, uh, the role of a husband, the role of a wife, the standing of children, the honoring of parents and elders, how you organize your space, the establishment of your salawat, your routines, your practices, what takes priority over other things. Today you'll have a home, and what's governing the ethos of the home is um, academic achievements and accomplishments, careerism. These are very distinct, very prevalent, very present philosophical underpinnings in our homes that govern every decision, sleep schedules, diets, routines. Have we considered ماذا يرضي الله ورسوله? Where is the routine of waking up for Salatul Fajr? Why is that not given prominence and paramount in our in the psychology of our homes? Right? When the Prophet Sallam and his keenness <laughs> on his followers praying Salatul Fajr, he would become deeply angered and hurt and bothered by the Muslimin who did not pray Fajr in jama'ah and together in collectiveness or in, in, in community. That's just an example. Our institutions, our masajid, our, our, our schools, our Islamic schools, what makes an Islamic school Islamic? What about the standard practices, the, the conduct, the, the decorum, uh, the, the education, the, the teachers who are teaching, the boards who are governing? What makes it that are these individuals considering a modality that centers Allah wa Rasulu? That this really pleases them. We very often we have so many spaces that are governed more by the 
unfortunate realities of bureaucracy and politics. You have the bureaucratic system of an institution, or you'll have the political, you know, considerations of institutions. Then you'll have effectively a battle of wills. Because one, what has happened in our modern era is that you know every nefs has been given a distinct type of exaggerated, uh, ingratiated value. So everyone assumes now I must be negotiated all the time. So all of our sacred spaces, whether it's the home, the masjid, or beyond, are buckling and being harmed, and they're being held hostage by nufus, by cells, by egos, right? My party, my people, my friends, my, my outlook on Islam, the way I think it should be uh, religiously, the way I'm religiously inclined. I don't care about scholarship or not scholarship. This is what I know. A lot of that is, is, is it, it, it just it, it, uh, pollutes, it pollutes our spaces. So then when you have, that's on the institutional level, what do you have about husband and wives? Where it's just husbands and wives, it's a battle of wills. My career versus your career. My interests versus your interests. You're just supposed to be playing a supporting role in uh, my story. I am the protagonist and you are the supporting actor to, to, to my story and my life. Because I have a tr my truth. I have my truth and I have my, my, myself. I have to realize myself. I don't want to be lost. You know, people will say, you know, subhanAllah, when you have a governing emotion that says, I don't want to lose myself in all of this. What does that mean to lose yourself? <laughs> what are you? What, what am I? Who are we? You know, فَلَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ means you literally do not take a step forward in your existence, in your identity, in your philosophical underpinnings, except with بِمَا يُرْضِ اللَّهِ That's why I tell people all the time. There's one question. If you pr present it and you make it present in every single juncture of your existence, you'll never, ever be in anguish. And that is, is this pleasing to Allah and His Messenger? It's a very simple truth. That's, that's, a, that's an operationalizing of this principle. That to qaddimu, what brings pleasure to Allah and His Messenger? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Akbar. Hafizhukum Allah Shaykh. That was, I think that's the best conclusion to the to, to the live stream and the opening session, uh, this is the ultimate question, and that that's the question we want to operationalize through reflections on these uh, on this uh, surah. So, with your permission, see the thought. If I just wanted to give um, one particular etiquette, since this chapter is about etiquettes, um, when you listen to anything that benefits you from celebrate mercy, the etiquette is to make dua for the team that is working hard behind the scenes to facilitate this for you and to make dua for your teachers. That is the, what I would say is the bare minimum right that your teachers have over you is to make dua for Sheikh Yasir and his family, make dua for Sheikh Muhammad and his family, um, so that inshallah you can be in the best position to receive what they have uh, all through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so that's, that's uh, barakallah fikum. Fikum, fikum. 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 The floor is yours, and thank you again, Sheikh, for allowing me <laughs> to be next to you, Sheikh. Allah Please give my salam to your father Shabbat. and kiss his head for me and uh, tell him we miss him and we love him as he loves us. May Allah bless you and bless him, Ya Rabbi. I mean, I mean. Uh, he was actually just, uh, he heard he heard you, and he was just like, oh, wait, I need to come and say salam, <laughs> but he couldn't come up. So he already uh -huh. uh, told okay, me this. Okay, well, well, inshallah, next time, and hopefully we'll see him and, and, and hear him. His beautiful voice, Ya Rabbi. Barakallah. Yes, yes, yes. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you to both of our teachers. That was uh, amazing, mashallah, an amazing introduction. Um, and just a reminder to all, I mean, there's a lot of comments coming in, mashallah, so many comments coming in. Uh, Sister Nicole, I'm just pulling one up here. We are blessed to have this moment together to worship in uh, with unity in our hearts and tongues. And may Allah continue to bless our lives to worship him. Thank you. Celebrate mercy. Today's lessons are food for our soul. Well, this is just the beginning, inshallah. And um, we are going to have these sessions on Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, mashallah. Um, and we'll hear from these three teachers over the course of those seven sessions. Alhamdulillah. We will also have some time for questions and answers, maybe five to 10 minutes in each session. Uh, you know, we actually fulfilled that because uh, if you noticed, Imam Ahmad Deeb asked Sheikh Yasser a question. So we we technically did have some Q&A even today, alhamdulillah, where one of the teachers asked the other teacher a question, which was a very, very beautiful question, mashallah. So if you haven't registered for this class yet, please go to the link you see there on the screen, celebratemercy.org slash RA, so that you get 
uh, you get information about each session, who's teaching it, when we go live, uh, and inshallah, you know, that will be uh, very beneficial for you as well. We even have a WhatsApp group that you can choose to join um, for this specific, uh, this specific course as well. A couple of other uh, announcements. Um, this is our time of the, you know, first of all, like we actually have an Umrah trip coming up with Sheikh Mendez and Sheikh Aisha Prime and Ustad Mahdi Amin. We have an Umrah trip that goes from Jordan to Jerusalem, to Mecca, to Medina. That is going to be in February. We will be in Jerusalem, inshallah, at Masjid Al-Aqsa on the night of Isra and Mi'raj, uh, the 27th night of Rajab. And uh, this is a trip that is transformative. There are probably people watching this webinar who joined us in previous years. You can attest, you can mention in the comments what this tri trip meant for you. And if you're interested, go to our trips website and fill out the interest form. We also have a January trip that is, it's not going to Jerusalem, but it's going from four, four nights in Mecca, four nights in Medina. It's a shorter trip, about 10 days, right at the beginning of the new year, inshallah, with Dr. Rania Awad and Sheikh Hasib Noor. So go to our website to learn more about that uh, trip, inshallah. Don't forget, you know, we have our morning salawat sessions as well. That is going to be resuming tomorrow morning at 1030. Make sure you're registered for that as well. And lastly, I want to say that, alhamdulillah, some of you have been responding to our annual fundraising campaign. We are trying to get more monthly supporters because as an organization, we have a monthly deficit. Every month, our monthly bills are higher than our monthly donations. So we, our monthly donations currently do not cover, they only cover about 40% of our monthly expenses as an organization. So each month we have a deficit. Uh, that's why we try to raise so much money in Ramadan, for example. But in Rabi al-Awwal, we are trying to increase the number of monthly donors we have, the monthly sustainers that help keep this organization going. If we can reduce our deficit by half by you know hitting this goal, that would be amazing. Uh, we could do so much more as an organization in terms of our programming, our kids' programming, our publications, our conferences, our trips, uh, our videos that we're posting, the video gems that we post on our social platforms. So if you can support this work, inshallah, please do. by The best way is by becoming a monthly donor. And of course, it is. We talked about you know what pleases Allah and his messenger. Uh, please consider, inshallah, using the provisions that Allah has blessed us with to further this cause. It is a sadaqah jariya. Imagine if you are helping to fund these programs, how much blessings you will get for everyone that learns from these programs, like the program tonight. When we have paid courses, they become free for you as one of the ansar of Celebrate Mercy. We have special discounts sometimes that we ex that we extend to those in the ansar circle, our monthly donors. And you also get a free annual gift in the mail. If you join, and by the way, to join the Ansar Circle as a monthly donor, it's simply $20 a month. That's less than a dollar a day. If you join at that level, or if you're already a monthly donor and you want to go higher by $20, you will receive, inshallah, this beautiful gift, uh, this publication by Zaytuna College. It's a recent publication with Dua of the Prophet Sallallahu in Arabic, translation also by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Asad Tarsin. This is a book compiled by Sheikh Ahmed Bedawi, uh, and the foreword is written by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. $20 will get you this $20 book published by Zaytuna College. The $40 level, you get this beautiful uh, uh, building block set for kids. You can gift it to your own kids, maybe for Rabi al Awal or to other kids that you may know, but it is a 300-piece uh, set of blocks. They are compatible with Legos, but these are not Legos, and you can build this detailed replica of Masjid and Nabawi in Medina. This is a $40 gift you get for joining at the $40 level. Or you can get this $100 book, a leather-bound edition of al Khasais al-Muhammadiyah. It is an amazing classical work. Uh, three, actually, three classical works on this topic of the unique virtues and qualities of the Prophet Wasallam. And the foreword was written by Sheikh Yasser Fahmi. Uh, and if you join at the $60 level, you will receive this $100 gift, inshallah. So I want to invite you all to please consider joining the Ansar Circle. And if you're one of the first 100 who join us in Rabi al-Awwal, 
then you will also potentially win a trip to Umrah with Celebrate Mercy. So that's another perk as well. Right now, we've had about 40 people sign up, but we're not at that 100 mark yet. And the goal for the month is 313, which is the number of Muslims who fought at the Battle of Badr. Uh, you know, alhamdulillah. I want to lastly thank our two sponsors. We are still looking for families to sponsor these webinars. The family of Marhum, Dr. Abdul Quddus, and their dua request, everyone, please say amin to this. Ya Allah, protect us from all the difficulties and challenges of the deen, dunya, and akhirah. Ya Allah, most merciful, bless those who return to you with Jannatul Firdaus. May we all live as our beloved Wasallam did in service of and for the pleasure of Allah. Amin. And from the Martin family, O oh Allah, open the hearts of all of our family members for your message and your messenger, Sallallahu and guide them to the straight path. O oh Allah, bless the Celebrate Mercy team for spreading this message of love, light, and mercy, and grant them success in this life and the next. Inshallah, if you're if you can sponsor a webinar, maybe two webinars. We have 75 webinars this month. Please consider emailing us. And we can send you more information on how you can sponsor one or more of our webinars for this month, inshallah. Uh, we will see you, inshallah, tomorrow. We have programs tomorrow for in the morning, the daily salawat. We have the evening program, the journey with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, continuing our Sirah and Shema'el series. And uh, make sure you just visit our page with all the programming, the kids' programming, mashallah, re resuming on Saturday. And I hope all of you. We have hundreds of you watching. I hope all of you have taken one second to click on that like button that really helps celebrate mercy to spread these videos, these live streams with many, many more people and subscribe to our channel as well, inshallah. Take care, everyone. We hope to see you in future sessions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.